to welcome to stage the Chief Executive Officer of Signum, Max Stock. Thank you. As Jeff mentioned, this was the first uh, event that I that I went to when before we did a deal and uh, with Nerium, and um, it really convinced me that Nerium uh, was the right company to partner with. We had a lot of opportunity to partner with many different companies, and um, after meeting Jo and Amber and the crew at Nerium, um, it was very clear. And meeting all of you, I met all of you, and you guys were fantastic, fantastic, and continue to be. Amazing hearing all your stories and, and meeting all of you, and uh, it's, it's been an amazing experience and, and hearing, hearing all the effects of our technology. It's a real dream for a scientist to work on something in the bench and then, and then actually see it affect people's lives and change people's lives. It's amazing. It's an incredible experience. And I just wanted to start off just to thanking all of you um, for everything that you do, and, and uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. So I'll start off today. So, so some of you have heard this, but uh, some of you haven't. So what we do is we discover small molecule therapeutics to modulate signal transduction imbalances. Like, what the heck does that mean? Um, so signal transduction imbalances. So what we focus on is, so if you think of a cell, so your body is made up of all these cells, millions and millions of cells. And so inside these cells, you have these signal transduction networks. So it's all these different networks of proteins that are interacting with each other and changing each other. And what happens in disease and different imbalances in health is those, those networks start to become dysregulated. They, they start to lose equilibrium. And so what we do is we actually discover and invent small molecules. So small molecule meaning that it actually can get inside the cell. So what we do is we develop those to, to modify these signal transduction imbalances. And we not only look for things that are synthetic, but we also look for, for these signaling molecules that are in botanicals. And, and, and of course, you know EHT from coffee. And so the founders of the company, my father, Dr. Jeffrey Stock, who's, who's here, who's, who's, who's uh, a lot of you guys have seen. Um, so the two of us. Uh, founded Signum Biosciences, and Dr. Stock, uh, Jeff, has been at Princeton University for, for over 30 years. Um, he's published uh, many, many, many papers in, in top profile journals, win, winner of the Humboldt Prize. Um, and we worked together um, initially to, on, the, on the bench before we even started Signum, um, getting all the foundational research together um, to, to, to make it so we could actually start the company. And then in 2003, we formed the company. And that's, that's really the history. That's the, the real core foundation of what we've done. So Signum Biosciences was originally founded. And then we spun out two separate entities, Signum Dermalogics and Signum Neutralogics. In Signum Neutralogics, we focus on the dermatological technology, so developing these anti-aging cosmetic products. And then in Signum Neutralogics, we develop botanicals and supplements, and not just for brain health, but other, uh, uh, other areas as well, which, which as J.O. mentioned, you guys will see in the future. So today, I'm going to talk about two different areas. Uh, neuroscience and dermatology. And we've coined these small molecules signal transduction modulators, so STMs. And, and the three that we'll be talking about today are EHT, SIG1273, and SIG1191, which is the new compound in the eye serum. So why brain and why skin, um, you might ask. So those two organs are actually very closely related. Um, if you want to look at the health of your brain, a good way to do that is look at the health of your skin. They age in exactly the same way, and you can actually take a human skin cell and convert it into a brain cell, which is pretty amazing. So they're very fatty-like organs. There's a lot of nerves in skin, and obviously there's a lot of nerves in, in brain. So what we were able to do is develop screening systems for both of these different areas. So a lot of the common causes of brain and skin cell aging 
are chronic inflammation, oxidative stress, DNA damage. And what our molecules and extracts do, they're anti-inflammatory, they're antioxidants, and they modulate these cell signaling networks. So there's a lot of overlap between the two. And of course, what's very important to any business is that they're patent protected. And so we continue. So these two patents are exclusively licensed to Nerium International globally, which makes it so no other company can come in and take this product and put it in another formulation and compete with you. So that's a key, a key part of your business. And also 1191 is, is patent protected as well. So, and that's just really the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we really have a lot more technology that we're developing. And as we continue to see success with Nerium, as Signum becomes more and more successful and we have more and more resources, we put those resources in developing new technology and new patents and then feed those into Nerium, which is beautiful. So you might ask yourself, why Nerium? Why did Signum go with Nerium? I've kind of spoken to that already, but, but really it's the core uh, uh, philosophy that they want to develop real science and have real results. So uh, uh, really having clinical data, having scientific data, published data, and peer-reviewed journals is critical to this business. And so that's critical to Signum. Uh, we're scientists, and everything that we do needs to be peer-reviewed, and it needs to be real. So that resonated with us in a big way. So another key part that one of the most exciting things that we realize with Nerium is how incredibly quick they are. So we've done deals with other companies, the likes of Elizabeth Arden and so on and so forth, and these companies move like icebergs, like oil tankers. It's, it's unreal how slow they are. And then when we, when, we, when we got turned on to Nerium and we started talking to J.O. and the team, it was unbelievable how fast they moved. So that's really important to us. And I imagine it's really important to you guys as well. And you've seen that. So they move into these other countries. And, and, and for a, a small biotech company like Signum, uh, it's an amazing experience to be able to be uh, exposed, exposed globally. Uh, we, we've given a couple talks to Korea um, in Seoul, which was an amazing experience. Um, I had never been there, and to be able to go there and have that kind of experience and be able to interact with the Korean people was an incredible experience. Um, just, just can't speak enough, and very excited about Japan. Um, we actually are partnered with a Japanese company. They're one of the original investors in Signum, Roto Pharmaceuticals. So we, we have some experience there and, and, are, and are really looking forward to that product launch by before our kids go to school, I think, I think Paul Peter said. So. so, and really last but not least, probably last but the most, is the real family values that Nerium has. Obviously, Signum, my father and I are doing it. And I see Amber and J.O. are doing it. So that really resonated with us as well. There's a, I think because of that, there's a real, I think Nerium cares more than a lot of other companies that we've interacted with. A lot of these other companies, you have these upper management executives. You know, they all just kind of work there, right? And so Signum is my life, and it's my father's life, and it's, you know, it's everything. And I see the same thing with J.O. and Amber. It's their, it's their life, it's their passion, it's what they're doing. And that's a really, really rare thing in business. I haven't seen a lot of it, at least in the biotech space. And so that, it's really real with those guys. And that whole, the whole team at Nerium is a real family. And I see that all you guys are family. And, and that really is a big reason why we picked Nerium um, to commercialize our technology. So now I'll get into more of the uh, more hardcore science around EHD. So I'll start to talk about neuroscience. And I apologize if you don't understand some of the things that I talk about. But you can always ask questions. Signum Biosciences has a Facebook page where we take questions. Um, and, and we'll try to answer as many as we can. And I, I apologize, apologize if it takes some time. But that's a great resource if you guys have any, any kind of scientific questions or things that you don't understand. So brain health is important. We all know that. Um, in, in uh, I think, in Dallas, Dr. Carl, Dr. Amen gave a talk about how important brain health is. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Um, but 
I think a lot of our lifestyle, especially modern lifestyle, isn't really conducive to brain health. Um, we tend to eat too much, not get enough sleep, and not be active enough. And really what that does is that leads to poor brain health. And poor brain health can be really spread into your whole life, right? I mean, it can cause all kinds of different problems. It can cause problems at work or school. It can cause problems in your relationships. It can make you feel bad about yourself. And you might, you know, beat yourself up. And, and a lot of that will come from just unhealthy living. And I think that is a new, a new way to think about brain health. I think people haven't really thought about it. They've more thought about heart health or, 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 or other things. But brain health is really the master, the, the CPU that controls your whole body. It controls how you feel. It controls your happiness. And it, and it controls uh, all other systems. So clearly, is the most important organ in your body, clearly. And so what we've done is we've developed EHT to address those concerns. So EHT is a tryptamide. It's the major bioactive molecule in coffee. Um, and shortly I'll get into how we actually discovered it. So some of the problems with aging of the brain, as I, as I discussed, was you get neuronal loss due to oxidative stre stress, as well as growth factor loss. You get horm hormonal loss. You get inflammation, as well as just intrinsic aging is going to cause you to, to lose some of your brain health. And so what we did is actually go through a process of taking a key protein that regulates uh, 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 microtubule function or, or regulates brain function and use that as a target to actually find a botanical that would enhance your brain health. And, and it was a long process. But what we did is we started, and the protein that we actually focused on was PP2A, protein phosphatase 2A. It's the major phosphatase in eukaryotic cells. So eukaryotic cells are mammal cells, right? They're not bacteria. And so in every, every cell, PP2A is the major regulatory protein. And more specifically, it regulates tau protein, which is involved in microtubule formation and stability. And so what we're able to do is actually create, we actually patented a screen around PP2A, so we own that. Nobody else can come in and take PP2A and develop anything, because we own that, that space. <laughs> which is really key, right? So we not only own EHT, but we own the tools to develop another EHT. So it's very key to protect our business and your business. So what we were able to do is we took this, this, this protein screen and we, and we screened a number of different botanicals and we got a number of different hits, but one of those was actually coffee. And the, how we chose these different botanicals was we searched the epidemiology. So there's quite a bit of literature out there on botanicals and herbals that have cognitive enhancing properties. And so coffee was one of those, obviously. It's the, the biggest drug, brain drug out there right? Caffeine. It's the most consumed beverage in the world. And there's a reason for that. So we decided to go after coffee because it was so ubiquitous. It's the second most traded commodity besides oil. Very easy to get. Inexpensive. Cost of goods are critical for a consumer product. Um, and it, it, there's quite a bit of data out there showing that if you drink more than six cups of coffee a day, which is a lot and would be tough to do, but you, there's a 40% reduction in getting neurodegenerative disease. Women who drink more than four cups of coffee a day have a 50% reduction of getting type 2 diabetes. It's incredible, right? There's a reason why humanity is consuming coffee. And so that's the reason why we decided to go after it. So we went through a process of taking coffee and we use uh, 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 chromatography methods to separate, separate out all the various molecules in coffee, and there's many. It took us years. And we actually discovered the active molecule, which is EHT, as you see the structure here. And that's, that's EHT, the product. So subsequent to that, so how does EHT work? As I mentioned previously, EHT regulates tau protein, and pro tau protein regulates microtubule function. So microtubules are actually 
the cytoskeletal transportation system in the neuron. So they're critical for neuronal function. And so what happens when you actually get problems is tau becomes dysregulated. As I mentioned, you have these signal transduction networks that become dysregulated. And so EHT helps stabilize the tau protein so it's able to allow for the, the, the solid, stable formation of these microtubules. So what happens as you get older, tau becomes dysregulated and you start to form these neurofibrillary tangles, which you see on the right is the little pointy little aggregate there. And so you can have that also happen in instances uh, uh, very acutely. So a lot of you probably have heard about chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is CTE. Um, so it's been a big problem. You've had a lot of football players actually uh, retiring early. So this is what happens to them. Tau becomes hyperphosphorylated. You get neurofibrillary tangles. You get uh, 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 cognitive loss, motor function loss, depression, suicide. Life falls apart. It's a big problem for people that are getting traumatic uh, uh, concussions. But this happens over your lifetime, depending on your lifestyle, it can happen quicker or soon or, or later. But in essence, that, that's what we're all going through. So these, these, these individuals that are hitting their head all the time are basically aging at a very, very quick process. And so tau is, if you go look, look up CTE on Google, and you'll see the mechanism behind CTE is hyperphosphorylated tau and neurofibrillary tangles. And so, this is all very accepted science. And actually a paper just came out from the Nobel laureate Eric Kendall out of Columbia proving this hypothesis, which is, which is amazing. We put that on our Facebook page. It's a big deal, it's a really big deal. You really may, might be like, who's Garrett Kendall? But in the science community, it's a very, very big deal. It proves the hypothesis that I'm discussing. And so here's an actual image of, of that. So here you have these clear spaces where tangles are forming and microtubules are falling apart. And there you see, this is an actual image of these microtubules. And here you can see an area that's very robust and has a lot of microtubules. And so as we age, we lose vasculature, we lose formation of these microtubules, and you can see the unhealthy neuron down there in the bottom left. Um, so that, so that's, that's what happens. And so EHT is able to, by activating PP2A to protect tau, it stabilizes microtubules. Pretty simple story, but a lot of complexity underneath. And so we've, as I mentioned, we've published a number of different, uh, in, in a number of different journals, Neurobiology of Aging, Neurotherapeutics, Journal of Neuroscience. These are very, very high profile journals. This is not some magazine somewhere. These are peer reviewed. There's a group of scientists that review uh, a, 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 a story or a, a science before they allow it to be published. So there's a lot of validation here in these, in these journal articles and you can go and, and, and read these articles. Um, we also have presented in a number of different um, uh, 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 meetings, conferences, scientific conferences around the world. Um, we actually just presented a poster um, another poster on EHT, which we put on our, on our Facebook page, and you can, you can look just further evidence showing EHT to be active against its molecular target. And so some of the benefits of EHT is that it protects and supports neuronal networking, boosts the immune system. So there's also other ingredients in EHT. So there's B6, So B, B6, B12, vitamin D, magnesium, and all those also enhance brain health. And, and, and some of the claims are based on those ingredients as well. And so some of, the, some of the claims that you can make are improves memory recall, better cognitive function, increases focal, focus and mental alertness. So obviously these are very impactful claims. And I think if anybody was to look at this, it's very compelling to take EHT. Why wouldn't you take EHT? There's no reason to not take it. It's a no-brainer, for sure. 
So now I'll move on to uh, dermatology um, and, and the anti-aging uh, technology, SIG 1273, which is now in uh, Mexico, Canada, um, and, and Korea, and, and we'll be launching into Japan. So this is the next generation molecule from the original uh, IPC. So we've, we, we call these isoprenal cysteines. So understand what that means. So basically you have, uh, 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 it's basically a tail of a protein. So as you can see, this tail, we started with the discovery of AFC. So that AFC is actually a first generation molecule. This is in actually about 12 SKUs in Elizabeth Arden's products as anti-aging products. And that was our first molecule. And so what we've done is we have a medicinal chemistry program where we actually, we're actu where we actually modify these molecules and enhance, and enhance their activity. But this was the original discovery that Jeff made in his lab over 20 years ago, discovered AFC, um, and, it's, and, it, and, and really proved that it had anti-inflammatory effects. So what are some of the causes of skin aging? It's exposure to UVB. That's the number one cause of skin aging is sun exposure by far. So in the United States, it, you'll, and you really see that in Asia, I think uh, Asian people are much more protective of their skin because here in the United States, it's nice to be tan because you can show you don't have to go to work and you actually can go to the beach and get tan. And in Asia, it's really popular to be very light, very light colored. Um, it, and, it, and so you can see the differences in the skin aging in terms of the wrinkles. The more sun exposure you get, and I love sun exposure, so um, don't get me wrong. It's good for you as well, but in terms of vitamin D, I guess. But it really causes the, the extracellular matrices in your skin to break down. All that UVB really destroys that, those connective tissues. And over, if you can really see under your arm here, you have this amazing supple skin that's no, you know, it's amazing as opposed to your face. And so you can, you can really see that the UVB is the number one cause, but also chemical pollutants, unhealthy lifestyles, alcohol consumption is gonna enhance anti-inflammatory effect, uh, uh, inflammation, as well as unhealthy diet and so on and so forth. So a number of different causes of, of skin aging. And so what we wanted to do is develop a molecule that addressed all of those different concerns. And, and so what we have done at Signum is set up screening systems for each one of those areas. And then we make modifications to this core structure here with all these different circles that you see. We actually put on different pieces of, of chemical to each one of those areas and then run them through screens to try to enhance their activity. That's classic uh, uh, medicinal chemistry. So what we do is we bring drug development to cosmetics. We bring, we bring the kind of rigor of drug development to cosmetic development, um, which really nobody else is doing. It's a novel idea. And so what we do is we make all these modifications, run through those screens, and then try to find uh, the best molecule that addresses all the different uh, uh, issues of aging. And so our first molecule, well, we made many, many, many molecules until we got to this one. But the first one that we really wanted to move forward with after AFC was SIG 1273. And that's the molecule here. You can see the chain's a little longer and it has a little bit of a different head group. And so we developed SIG 1273 and that's what, that, that is what it is currently in the, 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 the Optimera uh, day and night cream as well as the contour cream. And so we've taken that molecule and we've done a number of different scientific studies on it. And the real, as, and so here's a, w w how does SIG 1273 work is, you can see here the cell membrane. As I mentioned before, you have a cell, basically, let's say it's a circle, but it's like a, more like a water balloon. And so what, you have certain proteins that actually stick into that water balloon surface, stick into that membrane. They stick out on the outside and they stick out on the inside, which is pretty unique in terms of proteins. And so what these isoprenal cysteine analogs are, SIG1273, they're, they're mimics of the actual tail of that protein. So we actually copy Mother Nature. 
is what we do in essence. And what that does is it modulates downstream inflammation signaling pathways, reduces inflammation, and reduces aging. So as I mentioned also, SIG1273, it doesn't just target the causes of aging uh, uh, specifically, but there's another of a, a, a number of other activities as well. There's, there's specific regulatory proteins that it affects. So it has, it's really multi-dimensional in terms of its biological activity. And, and that's key to a molecule. You don't want to have it in terms of a, a skin uh, anti-aging molecule. You don't want to have it just have one mechanism. You want to have as many as possible so you hit on as many factors. Because obviously there's a lot of factors. Nothing is ever just simple in one thing. So you want to have it as, have as many properties as possible. And so again, we've published um, on SIG1273 in a number of different scientific journals on its biological activity. And, and again, you can, get some, you can get those articles from our Facebook page. Um, we, we, we posted those there. So some of, the, some of the benefits are that it protects against photoaging, which is the number one. And we actually, at Signum, we have UVB and UVA, uh, a, a big chamber, actually, with these big UVB, UVA lights. And we take cells in a Petri dish, and we expose them to this UVA, UVB. And when you do that, you get all these pro-inflammatory cytokines. And those cytokines cause all these problems, right? And so that's the system that we use. And that, that we really see that as the number one kind of effect that you want to have. Um, but it also improves skin elasticity and firmness, targets a number of different causes of aging. It, the molecule itself is an antioxidant. So I, I'm sure you've all heard of oxidative damage. And so what's key is that you have a molecule that soaks up these free radicals. Those free radicals just go everywhere and do all kinds of damage, um, break down extracellular matrices and so on. And so this SIG1273 molecule actually absorbs these oxygen molecules. Um, and, then it, and, and then it also boosts skin repair mechanisms by actually activating these good cytokines. So there's bad cytokines and good cytokines. So it has a number of different biological activities um, that, that are responsible for the benefits that you see in the clinicals that Nerium has done. So next, I want to introduce our chief scientific officer, Dr. Eduardo Perez, and he's going to talk about aquaporins, and so specifically SIG 1191. Hey. Thank you. So, and I just want to say, there's there's a big team. There's a team of people. So a, a lot, you know, Jeff and 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 myself. Uh, it's not just us. There's a group of scientists at Signum, and as well as at Princeton University that have contributed to that. And 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 Dr. Perez has been with us since practically the beginning of Signum. He really came to Signum straight out of graduate school, and. Jeff and I saw right away that he, he, he's, he's a guy that we need to really uh, put a, invest a lot of time and energy into, and it's really reaped rewards. He's the, he really directs our research at Signum, um, and, and he's responsible specifically, um, he's really carried the ball on developing SIG 1191 and the eye serum. He writes our, our scientific papers, um, and is a real, real asset to Signum and to all of you. So. Thank you. I can't say enough good things about, Thank you. about Eddie. So who wants to uh, hear about the science behind the ice room? <laughs> or are you guys scienced out? All right. So as Max discussed, we developed IPCs initially to target inflammation, antioxidant, uh, assist in skin repair. So what we wanted to do at Signum about eight, seven, eight years ago was build on the properties we knew we had in IPCs and make them better. So one of the things we wanted to go after was improving skin moisturization or hydration. And that's where aquaporins come in. So aquaporins are in our skin and they basically are channels that transport water to make our skin more, more moisturized. So aquaporin 3 or AQP3 is the major aquaporin in the skin. 
Next slide. So remember, AQP3, that's the one you got to remember. <laughs> so at the same time, around 2008, 2009, the literature um, in the dermatology community started publishing on AQP3 as a new skin target. So we're like, okay, this is pretty cool. We're starting to see this target and the literature starting to emerge. And over subsequent years, more and more literature came out around AQP3. So we decided to sink our teeth more into it and devote more R&D effort uh, after it. And this so, really proves yep. that we have our fingers on the pulse of new science. And so we're constantly looking for new regulatory mechanisms that we can go after. And one of those was aquaporin. And we've actually worked with Zoe Drelos. Um, she's given talks for us in terms of our technology. We're very much in the space. We've received over $7 million from the National Institutes of Health to develop skin technology. That's a big deal. That's a very big deal. And with the help of my team, I wrote most of those grants. What, what's that? <laughs> I wrote most of those grants. You did. <laughs> so Thank Max God. always is thankful for that. No, just kidding. So um, next slide. We'll get back to the sign. Um, so what you want to do then in your skin is if you want to increase moisturization and hydration, you want to boost your AQP3 level. So as you can see there in the orange bars, as we increase the SIG-1191 concentration, what happens? We get more and more aquaporin-3, which means your skin will be better hydrated. It'll be more more moist, it'll have increased moisturization. So then next slide. And you really see here a dose dependence, which is really right. important to any scientific data, right? So, so really compelling data. You see those two little asterisks there? That means it's, to st it's to statistically significant. And this was presented at the Society of Investigative Dermatology, and we'll be presenting more data on 1191 next month at the next SID. So you guys will, will be looking for that uh, on social media as well as our website. So then tying into hydration, what does it do, what does it mean, or what are the causes of under eye dark circles? Well, as you can see there on the fourth line, a decrease in moisture or dryness is one of the causes for under eye dark circles. First and foremost, I'll say take your EAT, right. EHT, because the lack of sleep, we know EHT really helps with sleep. So this would be a nice combo to take. Take your EHT uh, at night or in, or in the morning or whenever you decide to take it to help you with your sleep. But then, to address the other factors of under eye dark circles, we're, we're covering that with the aquaporin-3, we've shown that. We know that the IPCs, and we've shown it with 1191, um, reduce and target inflammation. And then the last one, the one I put there first, is free heme. So you're wondering, oh, what's free heme? So that's located in these leaky, leaky capillaries. So what you want, so he, this free heme, it kind of floats around, it's kind of like, um, the ghosts in Pac-Man, they're just kind of floating around in space and they're going around and they're trying to kill Pac-Man, right? So the heme's there causing uh, oxidation, causing inflammation, and causing the, the dark circles. And so, so he heme are actually fragments of red blood cells. Yep. And that's why it's dark like that. So they get kind of trapped in these, in these areas under your eyes. So that's a, that's a, key, a key piece of, uh, a, a key thing to actually uh, uh, inhibit. So two more data slides, I promise. That's it, then no more science. <laughs> um, so there's a, an enzyme called heme oxygenase 1, or HO1 for short. So what that enzyme tries to do is go ahead and break down the heme. So the heme stops damaging our skin and causing those dark circles. So what you want to do then is apply something that will increase HO1, which will then knock down that free heme that's floating around. So as you can see here, um, in one of the studies that we did, the SIG-1191 knocks it down by 80 to 90%. And then we ran actually as a positive control because a lot of companies will use the EGCG, which is what's found in green tea. And you can see that does reduce by 40%, but you can see ours is twice as effective, right? Which is really key and shows, well, it's not five or 10 cent, a 10% better, it's double. That's and, really significant. And a lot of you have been asking, and a lot of you have been asking about competitors' eye serum. Right. And I, I really don't think any of those guys can hold anything to to SIG 1191. This has, re they don't have anything reducing HO1 expression, reducing reducing all these molecular targets. They just don't have it. Right. So then, what we did next was. Not to get too technical, but a lot of times people or companies or scientific uh, 
biotech companies will show, okay, our product works on gene expression, right? But they don't show actually an effect on protein levels. And in the end of the day, what you need to show is that your product or your compound is not reducing the mRNA levels, it's actually reducing the protein, because the protein is what's actually causing it, right? So this actually shows that SIG-1191 doesn't just work on the gene level, it actually works on protein level. So you can see as we increase, again, a dose dependence, it, redu it increases HO1, which will then get rid of that bad, nasty heme that doesn't just cause the dark circles, it actually causes aging because it produces oxidation, it produces inflammation. So with, with the next slide, um, that this work that we're taught that I'm that I presented here to you actually you guys first before the scientific community will be presenting it if you, if you guys scroll down there to number three we're presenting it uh, next month at the Society of Investigative Dermatology in Arizona just this past week and that's a very uh, big deal the Society of Investigational Dermatology is the big dermatology meeting in the world so everybody from around the world yep. comes to the SID and to be able to actually present that material there is a, an honor and a big deal. So. And, and I should also mention, not just this SIG 1191 poster, but at the SID as well, we'll actually be presenting our first Signum Nerium poster showing new data on the Optimera product. So that's a really big deal. Yeah. So we're really excited about that, and that'll, we'll be doing that uh, in the second week of May. So just to kind of finish things up before we bring out uh, Jeff Stock, <laughs> there's a lot of benefits and claims to the iSerum product. What I want to just leave you with is differentiates this product from all the other eye serums out there is that this eye serum will give you the immediate effect that many of, that many of the competitors, but those competitors tend to have this cracking uh, phenomenon to it that you don't want to have. But those products are just short term. They're actually, what they do is they increase the pH in your skin and that actually causes inflammation. So if you use that product over time, it's gonna damage the skin. So what this eye serum does and what differentiates it is you get the initial immediate benefits, but it's actually gonna help you long term as well, right? Because we're all about promoting an anti-aging, not just for the short term, but for the long term. And it's a much so, more elegant formulation. Yep. It doesn't cause this hardening that we've heard so much about from the competitor's product. No cracking, no irritation. It's a, it, it's a much better product all around. So with that, I just wanted to thank you for your attention. I'm gonna call out uh, Dr. Jeffrey Stock so he can uh, close, close our scientific call. Thank you. Great. Hey. Aren't these guys great? Fantastic. <laughs> I just wanted to say two things very briefly. First, you guys have changed my life. It's been great. It's true. And the second thing is that if you think these products are great, if you think this is great, just wait. We've got a lot more coming. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Great, great job.